Procreate has been a very popular illustration app for the iPad since its inception, made infamous by the many modern-day masters such as Loish herself. More recently, Procreate has released a new app built specifically for animation, so how do they compare? Procreate is a raster graphics editor app made exclusively for iOS for just shy of $10. It's used primarily for illustration. It can, however, also dabble into some animation and 3D model painting. The interface of Procreate is very minimal, for better or for worse. Most of the tools are compacted on the top bar, which includes your standard taskbar stuff on the left, such as actions and general manipulation options, such as image adjustments and selection slash deformation. And on the right, you have your drawing tools with the brush menu, smudger, eraser, layers, and color wheel. There are two extra sliders on the left for size and opacity manipulation, and that's pretty much it. This simplicity in the surface is made up for by the depth depth hidden within these icons and menus. The brush engine is very advanced, allowing for amazing flexibility and the rich library of resources made by other artists. You get access to many direct filter and adjustment layers, grids, guides, and different ways to select your color palette. Transformation, deformation, and all of these are supported by intuitive gesture-based shortcuts to make the workflow as smooth as possible. This program also provides tools that would allow you to navigate and paint over 3D models, and even a timeline to create basic frame-by-frame -frame animations, allowing you to explore different creative paths and to try something new without having to go through the overwhelming feeling of opening a brand new program for the first time. Although you will find these to be quite limiting after a while. <laughs> Speaking of animation, the people behind Procreate have something to say about it. With the animation feature being rather lacking in the original release, instead of patching it in, which could make the app more cumbersome, the team came up with Procreate Dreams, which promises a richer experience and a more streamlined workflow for animators, while sticking to what made the original version so great. Portability, quality, and ease of use. This statement will surely age well, right? Right? Procreate Dreams has, at first glance, a very clean interface with minimal information. It showcases your workspace, your most used tools, such as the pens, erasers, layers, etc., and the flipbook, which is the software's compact version of a timeline. This flipbook allows you to switch between frames as you draw full scenes with onion skins while also taking advantage of your favorite Procreate brushes. This flipbook can also be expanded into a full-fledged interactive timeline that can be adjusted, and you can navigate through it with the help of finger gestures. It is worth noting that this program is primarily designed with frame-by-frame -frame animation in mind, but it does also contain features that are more adjacent to motion graphics included to make your life easier, such as keyframes frame editing, bulk editing, a select group of content, and the ability to also add and animate topography with the full power of motion and filters. Other features include automatic easing and pre-recording motions and effects through touch, which can save you a lot of keyframe management. And much like its predecessor, it contains a very generous brush library with an engine not too dissimilar to help you breathe extra life to your work through beautiful dynamic textures. As of the time of recording this, however, it does lack in direct brush customizability. This app will also allow you to import and edit videos, voiceovers, and sound effects directly in-app. It is worth adding that the audio automatically slows down as you scrub through your timeline, so you can time your scenes and dialogue much more accurately and in a fraction of the time. As for the price, this app will cost you $19.99 US dollars exclusively for the iPad and the Apple Pencil. Now, let's talk a user experience. Despite sharing the same surname, these two couldn't provide a more different experience from each other. Procreate, much like most illustration software, is very intuitive to use. There is always a bit of an awkward period to get used to the brushes and gestures, especially if you have never used an iPad before, but generally speaking, the feel of its brushes and tools is good enough to keep you interested for the time it takes to get the hang of it. It's an overall pleasant experience through and through. This app is also popular enough and has been out for long enough so you can find tutorials, guides, resource packs every which where you look. 
Procreate Dreams, however, is a different experience. It's an animation software first and foremost, which makes it more complex by virtue of existing. The approach to creating a minimalistic interface also plays into its detriment slightly, at least at first, since with animation you will need more direct access to your tools more often for the optimal workflow. And since more tools are acquired, a lot of them must be hidden behind <laughs> infinite menus. The program can be a real goldmine, but it takes a lot of time and effort to unearth. Having prior experience with mainstream animation programs won't soften the curve that much either because of the platform it's made for. Uh, since again, the compact design and the way certain features are optimized are straight up counterintuitive, it will take some time to learn, but it is a worthwhile investment. With that being said, let's sum up the good, the bad, and the ugly with these apps. Starting with Procreate. There is honestly not much to criticize with this one as it fulfills exactly what it's designed to do. Uh, the very powerful brush engine combined with a very clean interface and all the editing and manipulation features make for a very fun and streamlined experience. The abundance of resources make it extremely easy to learn and use and with a very affordable price at that. Uh, what could cause issues has to do with the device it is used in as it can be rather limiting in terms of screen real estate but at this point we are nitpicking at details that aren't even this program's fault. And now, the dream's counterpart, however, is a bit of a different story. Even though the program is very complete in what it offers for both price and the platform it's made for, uh, the abundance of the brushes, the integration of layers, along with ways to simplify an animation process beyond just drawing the same frames over and over and over again, all plays in its favor. There are still issues when we take into account the complexity of it in relation to the offered features. As of the time of recording this, the program is still very new and riddled with some problems that are honestly difficult to overlook. Some very key features are straight up missing, including the most basic of lasso selection tools and the editing features that come along with it. For an app that takes it upon itself to provide so many features to the point that some have to be hidden behind many layers that you have to dig through, you can really feel the lack of these most basic of tools which can hinder the workflow quite a bit, especially if you are a seasoned animator with pre-established habits. Habits. This would also bring us to the steep learning curve imposed by this at times counterintuitive user experience. So to help you better choose what suits you best, let's put these two through one final filtration. The illustration version of Procreate is a perfect all-rounder, ideal for not only, well, illustration, but also very useful as established for other fields, including animation. So if you are looking for something affordable and portable, then Procreate can fulfill most of your needs while remaining quite intuitive and easy to use. The Dreams counterpart, although very potent and can definitely achieve high quality results, suffers from a lack of clarity caused by trying to compact too much in too little space screen space. That being said, it becomes far more intuitive after getting past the initial hurdle and it is worth picking up if the iPad is your primary surface that you like to work on. And that will be all she wrote. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you soon. Take care!